Their evolution began long before the dinosaurs, some 450 million years ago. And they arrived almost perfectly formed, perfectly designed. Great white sharks are sublime long-distance swimmers and natural-born killers. But beyond that, we don't really know that much about them, where they go, where they mate, where they feed. But with modern GPS and acoustic technology, that has all begun to change. We've joined a special expedition trying to unravel the mystery of the great white shark. It's all very pretty and very white in Chatham, Massachusetts, on Cape Cod. The houses, the picket fences, and as it happens, the sharks. Hey, fellas! Fellas! Spielberg's Jaws was shot locally at Martha's Vineyard almost 40 years ago. Hey, you guys. You guys okay over there? The beaches still look the same, the water just as inviting. Except that this year, they put up a brand new sign. Like the tourists, the Great Whites come back summer after summer, and scientists now know that for sure because they've been tracking them. Sharks terrify us, but they are vital to life on our planet. A predator at the apex of the food chain, their numbers keep our marine ecosystem in balance. That balance is now under threat because of the increased demand for shark fin soup in Asia that the Chinese believe has medicinal powers. Up to 73 million sharks are getting finned a year. 200,000 a day, 200,000 yesterday, 200,000 tomorrow. We gotta solve puzzles we've never solved before. And then we gotta leverage it for change. Because if we lose our sharks, we lose the ocean. And I don't really see a bright future for the planet with not a, without a robust ocean. We joined OSEARCH, a team of American scientists and fishermen on an expedition to tag great white sharks. You remember that line from Jaws? You're going to need a bigger boat. Well, the advice has apparently been heeded. At anchor, an old Alaskan steel-hulled crabbing vessel, the O-Search. Perfect. <laughs> when it comes to the Atlantic Ocean, we don't know the simplest, the answers to the simplest of questions. We don't know their mating activities. We don't know their, their pupping activities or where those activities occur. We don't know, for instance, how far they dive, how deep they go in the Atlantic. We don't know how fast they swim through the water. We don't know where they are in between so we can look after them or put a plan together for their future. Scientists have been tagging great whites all over the world since the 1960s, along the coasts of Australia, South Africa, California, Guadeloupe, Florida, and now Cape Cod. As many as 500 great whites have been tagged, and we are gradually building up a global map of shark movements. Right to the abdominal area. Yeah. How's the tide? Chief scientist Greg Skomel has been tagging great whites using a harpoon method for years. He thought he'd cracked the code. Most of the sharks went down to Florida and Georgia, the southeastern United States. Simple migratory pattern, except one shark did not. One shark did something very, very different. It moved off the continental shelf, away from the east coast of the United States, down to, uh, toward Bermuda, and then kept going past Bermuda and went into the part of the Atlantic we call the Sargasso Sea. Her name was Curly. Maybe big, mature females do something very different, and maybe they do that because they're pregnant. And so that kind of opened a can of worms for me. You know, I had to go about tagging additional fish. He's coming under the boat at it, Brad. Chris Fisher began O-Search in 2007 and names every shark he tags. So far, they've tagged 66 great whites. They all seem to have their own personality, their own stories, and they behave differently depending on the gender and the particular ocean. The male sharks are all living on the beach all the time. They have very little offshore life. While the female white sharks, they can travel a thousand miles a month, month after month after month. And they have this small coastal portion of their life when they come together with the males. But when they leave, they go offshore. They wander way out over to Madagascar and even to the east of Madagascar, out into the middle of the Indian Ocean. And they hang around out there for months and months and months. What are they doing out there? Are they out there gestating their babies?
As any fisherman knows, you have to be patient. On the horizon, a small, high-powered O-Search fishing boat, the Contender. If a great white was to be caught, they'd catch it and bring it to us. After 16 days out at sea, they'd only caught one shark. Six sun-beaten hours without any word of a bite. We were resigned to just learning from the experts. But when you have that animal in front of you alive, you know, kind of it coming to your world, you just get a whole new perspective of how big this creature Hang is. Hang on a sec. What is going on? What? What's that? We're hooked up. We're hooked up. That's we're critically hooked up. Fun. We're hooked up we're is with... the best words I can hear right now. <laughs> uh, who told me that? What's going on here? I, no wonder I missed a call from Fisher. Great. We've got a 14-foot uh, male, and uh, it's inbound, so it's time to get the team going. All right, all right. We'll fire up the uh, team. Where's Heather? Heather, are you here? The crew were ready, and I was about to come face to face with a great white shark. <laughs> 